The Late Show. 30 on STV Glasgow. Digital Nation. This is STV Glasgow. Now it's time to catch up on the latest Glendarek gossip. It's time to take the high roads. Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. Postcard from her from Largs. Oh. There we are. Well, that looks nice. Uh -huh. She'll be missing you, eh? Oh, not a bit of it. She's having the time of her life. And how are you and Donald managing? Oh, we're managing just fine, eh? Huh? We're maybe not eating too well, but uh, we're learning the hard way. <laughs> there you are. Oh, that's aye, it. Thanks. Hey, you'll have heard about Bob Taylor. Aye, aye, I have. Aye, aye, so he'll be back in a week or so. Alice will be pleased, eh? Oh, she is that, aye. I'll see you tomorrow night. Alice? Aye, at Ardna Craig. Oh, you've gone back there, are you, eh? <laughs> oh, you're turning into a real high flyer in Verdarek. <laughs> and uh, who are you taking this time? Nobody. I'm being taken. Oh, who by? Claire. Well, I helped her out a wee bit and she just wanted to say thank you. Oh, aye, that's what she says she's doing, is it? Aye. Ah, you're not very wise about women, are you? I mean, look, she's not married, is she? And what is it that women that are not married are always after? And you are a bachelor, right? Right. Well, you need to look out for yourself, man. She's after you, you know. She thinks so. Oh, I'm sure of it. You didn't eat much breakfast? No, no, I wasn't very hungry. Oh. Joe, I think I should call Dr. Wallace in. No, 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 I'm fine, honestly. Why were you sitting at the lock site when Alice found you last night? Does there have to be a reason? I'm sorry. Right. Um, there are problems. I was trying to get things clear in my mind. Funny place to do it. Didn't want anyone around me. So, what happens now? Well, I'll have to go home and face the music, I suppose. Are you ready for that? Will I ever be? Look, Joe, you don't have to go home. You can stay here if you like. Oh, I would like to, I think. You'll have all the peace you want. I'll be away most of the day. Thanks. Just hope you find some of the answers. Well, well. If it isn't Mary Poppins. What's with the umbrella? It's to keep me from getting wet. You're too late for that, son. You were born wet. Is that what you wanted to tell me? No. I just thought I'd mention it in passing. Harry Shaw has decided that he wants the estate to pay. I thought he was selling it. Aye, well, he's changed his mind. He wants to clear away all the mature timber, open up the sawmill again, and plant two or three hundred acres of new forestry. <sighs> That'll take some doing. Well, you needn't worry. I'm not going to ask you to do it. But uh, I'll have to get a couple of fellas for the sawmill. I'll need a woodcutter. Yeah, what about me? No, I want you to stick at the peak cutting full time. You can bring to it all the expertise you picked up when you did it for Glendarek. Oh, yeah, but Glendarek had a peat cutting machine there. Well, I'm not going to ask you to do it with your nails, says I'm a... Got a machine somewhere. If I want to buy one. Who are you thinking of selling the peat to? The same people you sold it to when you were with Glendarek. So, you see, I'll need a list of their customers and their prices. We're going to be very competitive in this. We'll have to be. Oh, by the way, there'll be a fellow hanging about here for a few days. Friend of Harry Shaw's. He's running the York Tower newspaper now. So, if he gets nosy... Tell him nothing. Those sort of people can make trouble. All right, then. Goodbye. Don't you like coming back? I don't know. She's staying at Ardner Craig for the day at least. Well, surely that's not so terrible. Well, I would have felt happier if she told me herself. Oh, that wasn't her. No, no, that was Fiona Cunningham. She takes far too much interest in our business for my liking. It's never done us any good. 
mustn't be like that, Eric. Girls like to be with girls, especially when they're expecting. And Fiona already has a child, so they've lots in common to talk about. Mm. Mr. Carradine to see you, Lady William. Lady William, Eric. I take it you have all the information we need? I have. Then let's get going. No time to lose. Listen, can I leave them with you? I've got one or two things to do. Yes, of course, Sheila. Hello, Minister. I'm some wedding photographs for you to look at. Sheila. You've come out very well in these, Mr. McPherson. Oh, uh, have I? Oh, uh, I hear the linkage went through. Yes, it did. You know, Brian's still very upset about your accident you had in the van when you were going to the presbytery meeting the night you were going to withdraw your resignation he feels he let you down perhaps it was meant personally i'm glad things can get back to normal normal with mr parker as the minister i doubt if things will ever be normal again you're going to be sadly missed mr mcpherson uh, that's very good of you isabel but uh, mr parker though somewhat forbidding is a worthy gentleman the best thing that can be said about Mr. Parker is that he lives in Ochtarn, so we won't be seeing too much of him. I'm sure he'll bring something to the village that it has lacked during my term of office. You know, somebody could agree with you there. Who? Mr. Parker said the very same thing himself. Well, I do hope he'll be as reasonable as he can with Mrs. Mack. He's being very reasonable, all things considered. He's going to apply for a court order, but he's decided to give her one last chance to leave the manse voluntarily. <laughs> That's big of him. I'm on my way to meet him now to assist him in that purpose. Well, that would seem to be that. I'll have to arrange to sell my furniture. Can't afford to keep it in store indefinitely. Oh. Expecting a thunder plump, Mr. Murder? I hope not. I just dropped in to see if you'd be interested in uh, hiring out your peak cutting machine. What, to let a fella? Well, that's who I represent. Are you thinking of going into that business? Mr. Shaw's very keen on it. <laughs> then I'd be stupid to make it easy for you. Miss Cunningham was happy to hire it out to us when she was in charge here. Not to the opposition. There wasn't any then. No deal. You're making a mistake. I'll just go and hire one somewhere else. It's uh, not good business practice, you know. You could have at least made a few bob out of the hire fee I would have offered you. But, uh, good luck. <laughs> Nothing ever changes around here, does it? What do you mean? Well, you're still sitting there on your fat backside. I'm looking after the office for law now while she's out. Oh, I've missed her then. Pity. <laughs> I hardly think she would agree with you there. I just wanted a wee word with her, but uh, maybe you can help. Oh, why? What is keeping Mr. Craig? Look, oh, here he comes now. Oh. Thank you for being so punctual. Don't mention it. Let us be about our business then. Ah, oh, Mrs. Ramsey, I'm glad you're here. I want you to witness what we're doing. Do you? Very much. And to report on it. In the past, your reporting on this matter has seemed somewhat partial. I have charitably put this down to slipshod observation on your behalf. But if you misrepresent our actions now, I shall know it was quite deliberate. Where is Mr. McPherson? Uh, he's in the house. Be good enough to tell him I am here and Mr. Carradine. Oh, right. I'll do that. I trust we shall not be late. With you in charge, Lady William, I'm sure we shall be in plenty of time. Huh. Lady William. Come, sir. <laughs> Mrs. Mack? Mrs. Mack, there is no point in behaving in this childish fashion. I know you're there. Mrs. Mack, you will gain nothing by this. I only want a word with you, but if that fails, I will have no option but to call upon the full force of the law. Ah, there you are. Mrs. Mack, I am about to apply for a court order to have you evicted from these premises. But I feel it is my Christian duty to give you one last warning so that you can leave of your own accord. I'm sure you'll understand there can only be one solution to this matter. One conclusion indeed. You'll be 
be sorry for that, mark my words. I'll get you out of there if it's the last thing I do. Oh, no, you won't. And who are you, madam? I have no desire to make your acquaintance, young man. It's enough that I represent the owner of this building. Oh, and who might that be? Bobo. But it belongs to my son, Sir John Ross Gifford. If, as you say, Sir John is your son, perhaps he has misled you. I dare say he is considering purchasing the man's, but... Young man, I don't know whether it's your hearing or your reason that's at fault. In either case, you have my sympathy. But you really cannot go around selling other people's houses, you know. Mr. Carradine, your profession entails explaining simple things to idiots. Please proceed. Mr. Carradine. Good morning, Mr. Parker. Perhaps you'll read this document. Now, this is just a photocopy, of course, but I can arrange to have the original made available, if you wish. That will not be necessary. This is a document dated 1856, and it gifts the manse to the church. Perhaps with all the skills at his disposal, Mr. Carradine can explain that to you. I think you may have overlooked the proviso. It states that the manse shall remain in the keep of the church only so long as it is used as a manse. Uh, since the linkage was confirmed, it no longer fulfills that function. The manse, therefore, reverts to the estate. Come down now, Mrs. Mack. You've won! <laughs> That's it. All over. The siege of the manse? Mm-hmm. Well, it's got a happy ending. <laughs> that only happens in fiction. Real life is different. One man's happiness sometimes means somebody else is miserable. And who's going to be miserable about the minister and Mrs. Mack getting the man's back? Eh? Have you spoken to Mr. Parker about how he feels? Oh, come off it, Bert. You know, this couldn't have happened at a better time for me. Why is that? The new editor coming today. <laughs> well, if he's anything like the old one, you've nothing to worry about. He'll just sit there lusting after you and not notice that you can't spell. <laughs> Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. Talkholiday.com is a fun place where social meets travel. Where you can chat online and share real travel tips with real people. And as you pass on the good stuff about the places you've been, you'll discover more about the places you've not. So come share your photos and reviews and get inside know-how from fellow travellers like you. And if you book a trip with us, you'll benefit from some of the biggest travel brands around. Let your hands do the talking and join TalkHoliday.com today. TalkHoliday.com, the social travel network. With TouchNote, you can send your favourite photos as real postcards straight from your phone. Just choose a photo, write a message and tap send. There's free worldwide delivery, and we post the very next day. Download the TouchNote app now. Broadband this, broadband that. It's too slow, it's too much. Go to U-Switch, get it sorted. U-Switch, the simple way to switch. Thank you. Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. I've come for the chest of drawers. The one you're donating to the tailors. Donating? That woman barged in here, selecting furniture for removal like a broker's man. And you call that donating? That's what she calls donating. You're very fond of the chest of drawers. Well, we're kind of used to it. Ah, oh, well. She might not notice if we swapped it for something else. Ah. On the other hand, she might. You're right, it's not worth the risk. You'll have to give me a hand, Brian. <clears throat> okay, it's this way. And remember, top secret. It's to be a surprise for the dealers. <laughs> it's a surprise for us, too. Hello. I'm Sheila Ramsey. I covered Glendarach for the paper. Ah, I've been reading your stuff on the siege. Did you like it? It's a good story. I've got the end of it here. I 
think you'll enjoy reading it? I don't think so. You said you liked it. I said I liked the story. The writing is something else. What's wrong with my writing? Let me put it this way. Your story is too good for anybody to spoil with bad writing, but you came about as near to it as anybody could. Nobody's ever criticised my writing before. Oh, I'm sure you got good marks for your essays at school. There is something else I don't like about your work. What? The way you get your stories. You stage managed this siege business, didn't you? It wasn't this Mrs. Mack's idea, it was yours. But it made a good story, didn't it? So would the assassination of a prime minister, but you don't set it up. Is there anything else you don't like about my work? Yes. You called a press conference in Glasgow about your story. Yes. Off your own bat. I take it you were trying to make a name for yourself. Why not? You could have sold it to the Nationals through the paper. It's called loyalty. I did all the work. The editor did nothing to push it. Not even when you told him you were thinking of contacting the Nationals? Or didn't you tell it? Right. You made a lot of contacts in Glasgow, didn't you? I think so. And now's your chance to find out just how good they are. What does that mean? It means you're fired, Mrs. Ramsey. Is anyone at home? Oh, hello. Oh, you must be Lady William. How clever of you to guess. <laughs> I'm Alice Taylor. Hello. Yes, how do you do? How do you do? Will you sit down? Thank you. <laughs> I've heard so much about you. Me? Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, I can't think how. And you'll be moving back to your old house soon? Uh, yes, yes, we are. But, well, not straight away. We've got one or two things to do first. Yes, well, your garden's gone to seed a bit. <laughs> You've seen it there. <laughs> I'm very interested in gardens. I try not to look at it when I pass. It makes me feel guilty. Well, it's not your fault. I, I know that, but I've always felt that it, it was my garden. <laughs> and it will be again. I'll send someone to clear it up before you move in. You shouldn't go to all that trouble. Oh, that's no trouble at all. Now, I really came to ask when would Mrs. Lachlan be back? Well, we're waiting to hear from her. Well, let me know when you do. She's such a fine old lady, Mrs. Lachlan, and manages so well for someone of her age. You've been looking at me kind of funny all afternoon, Bert. I always look like that in the afternoons. You think I was hard on the Ramsey girl, don't you? Not for me to say. You think I was wrong? Everything you said made sense. Fine. You can stop looking at me like that, then. Maybe you shouldn't have fired her, though. Why not? She's got a lot to learn, but she's got potential. I didn't come here as a teacher, and I don't want potential. I want professionals. They're not thick on the ground here. And she only had a village to cover, but she got to know it very well. You wouldn't get a pro to do that. And you wouldn't get a pro to take on such a lousy job, either. Finished? Finished. Good. Any time you want to talk things over... I don't. And I make my own decisions. Have you any idea where Archie is? He's doing a little job for me. Wouldn't have anything to do with all that junk in the gallery. No, it wouldn't. And that's not junk. That's furniture for the tailor's home. There's some rather nice pieces among it. I sometimes think you're trying to replace the welfare state, Mother. Well, if you're not prepared to do anything for your people here, somebody else must. In the meantime, my car has to stand out in all weather. Well, it won't come to any harm, and the furniture would. Um, what's all that junk doing in the garage? Your grandmother's collecting it in a good cause. Perhaps it would be better for my peace of mind if I didn't ask, but what are you up to with Mr. Carradine this morning? <laughs> Acting in another good cause, Bobo. Was he there to stop you from being arrested? Not at all. He was there to see that some property that belonged to the estate was returned to it. Oh, what's that? The manse. The manse? Oh, if you want the tiresome details, I'm sure Mr. Carradine will be happy to supply them. Are you sure about this, Bill? Well, the evidence was strong enough to convince that unpleasant Mr. Parker. Well, it's a valuable property. I shouldn't have any trouble finding a tenant or a buyer for it. Oh, I... I've already found a tenant. I was going to say it might do for Joe and me, but I suppose I'm too late. Much too late. Mm. And who is this tenant, Mother? 
That nice old minister and his housekeeper. I've promised them the life tenancy of it. A life tenancy? Yes. And no doubt you've negotiated a suitable rent. Oh, naturally. Suitable for them? Of course. Mr. McPherson's pension is not likely to be large. And so you promised it rent-free? Now, I knew that's what you would want, Bobo. You see, you and I always see the same way about these things, don't we? <laughs> oh, incidentally, I thought the occasion called for a little celebration, so I've invited the minister and Mrs. Mack to join us tomorrow for a drink. Hi. Hello there. Got a cup of tea? That's an idea. I rang a paper of yours today. I was trying to get an ad in for some workers in need and a housekeeper. The fellow said it wouldn't go in until next week. So uh, it'll be a while before you have somebody to look after you. That's okay. I'm not bad at making tea and frying up myself. But you're wrong about the advert. I made late space for it. Good. And it'll be free. Well, at least I could do. I'll be living here rent-free after all. Do you know, uh, Sheila Ramsey? Aye. Everybody knows everybody else around here. Oh, she works for you, doesn't she? She did. I fired her today. Did you now? <laughs> oh. She will have to go. Who? Lady Bell. Do you know what she's had me doing? What? Double dig in the tailor's garden. <laughs> if she's making you work, I can see why you want her to go. Aww. Um, Lorna, is Eric in? Uh, yes, he is. Uh. I'm glad I'm going home. Eric's been in a bad mood all day. Now it could get worse. Sneddon was in this morning. That could have something to do with it. What did he want? Well, I don't know what he wanted from Eric, but he asked me if I knew any casual woodcutters. <laughs> That's funny. I gave him Jim Hunter's telephone number. Jim Hunter? <laughs> the one who caused all that trouble with the Blairs? The very one. Maybe you'll do Snedden out of some money this time. Oh, I don't think you should have done that, Archie. Why? Well, it wasn't just money trouble that one caused. Mm -hmm. So you needed time to think. Why did you have to do it at Ardner Craig? Why is it always Fiona you go to when you've got a problem? Why not me? I didn't go to her, actually. Alice Taylor took me there. It was well after eight o'clock when she did. And what were you doing till then? I was just walking. What, for all that time? Mm-hmm. Cho, you're going to have to take better care of yourself. Eric, I can look after myself. Can you? You're my wife, Joe, And you're carrying my baby. <laughs> Sheila! What's wrong, dearie? been sacked from the paper. Sacked? Yeah. He should have given you a rise after that man's story. Oh, that's what did it, Brian. Doesn't want anything from me now. Not even reports in the woman's rudel. Look, come on through. You can tell me all about it. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll lock up. Of course. Oh, oh, you just made it. Is uh, Isabel around? Oh, yeah, she's through the back. Oh, good. Uh, there's something I've got to tell you, Brian. Yes. Jim Hunter might be coming to work for Snedden. Ah. Uh, forgive me, but uh, I wanted to work with you in private before dinner. Now, tell me if I'm poking my nose in, but I know things aren't right between you and Eric just now, and yesterday you said my advice had got you into a mess. I'm sorry I said that. I, I really don't know what I meant. I think you do. Look, Jan, I'm very fond of you, and if I've harmed you in any way, I'd like to do what I can to make amends. No, you haven't. I was just being silly. I said the end justifies the means, didn't I? Well, you said if that was the case, then, then the truth didn't matter. Yes, and I did. I told Eric what he wanted to hear. And it seemed to bring you together again. It did, but it's also why I don't know what to do now. About the baby. You think it might be Rory Galbraith's? What will I do? Have you told him? I told him, Miss Eriks. Then forget all about Rory. The baby is Eriks. <laughs> Clark.
classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. There you go. You'll need these. Thanks. Yeah. Come here, jump on. Yes. So where are we going then? We're going out to the muscle lines and yeah, hopefully you can see what it's all about. As long as it doesn't end up in the water, I'll be fine. Okay, Michael. This is it. This is where the muscles live. So you don't dredge these? No, it's ropes that the muscles grow on. They just thrive in these kind of conditions. This is A-grade water, which is the best. Which is the best, yeah. They hold on quite well, don't they? Yeah, they've got a good grip. Tell me about sustainability. We've been farming here for nearly 30 years, and if it isn't sustainable, we wouldn't be in business. OK, we'll cook some mussels up. Here we are. Oh, wow. Thank you. Oh, these are so good. No mud, no grits. Nope. So, Chris, it's not a bad ditch. Oh, sorry about the ditch. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of wasn't expecting it to be quite like this. It's definitely not a ditch. <laughs> Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. Minister up yet? No, still snoring his head off. Haven't got the heart to wake him. Uh, he'll be tired after all the excitement yesterday. You'll be tired. I'll be tired when I take all those tea chests back to the manse. <laughs> Uh, a nocturne, Harold, please. And, uh, have you put that notice up for me? What's it about? Well, if you put your glasses on, you'll see I'm looking for a new housekeeper for Letter Fallon. Oh, locally? Didn't think you liked employing locals. I don't. But it's only a temporary position. So I'll have the pleasure of getting rid of her soon. Good day. That's if anybody local will take the job. Make sure your Auntie Alice and your father are looking after the hens and the goats. <laughs> Does she not see when she's coming back? I'll be home on Friday. Love, Gran. <gasps> Friday? Now that's tomorrow. We need to start tidying this place up a bit. We don't want her thinking that we can't look after ourselves without her, eh? <laughs> yeah, I better make a start to the washing and ironing. It would spoil her holiday if she came back to find it all waiting for her. Oh, and the work at the hotel and Bob coming back this week, I'm going to be busy. Is he coming back this week? Yeah, we're going to move back into the cottage. You'll like that, won't you? Well, of course he will. I don't believe it. He's rewritten my story. Oh, has he? That's awful. I thought it was quite racy. Oh, come on, Isabel. It's cheap and nasty. I suppose that's what Mr. Ritchie calls good writing. You know, he'll turn the Herald into the sort of cheap rag he's used to working on. Well, I suppose he can do what he likes with it, now he owns it. He had the cheek to, to slag my writing and he writes like that. Look, if you'd seen what I wrote, you'd know what I mean. Well, he's taught me one thing. What's that? He dared me to get in touch with the contacts I made in the big papers and ask them for a job. I was scared to. But if they employed someone who writes like this, I could walk into a job tomorrow. From the way you're talking, I presume you mean Lady William. That's right, Barnacle Bill. <laughs> What's she done this time? Which is always doing, making my life a misery. Oh, poor soul. Now I've got more furniture to collect. Who's the victim this time? Fiona Cunningham. I've got to fetch all the way from Arna Craig. At this rate, the tailors are going to have to build a new wing to their house to get it all in. And I thought I'd fixed out yesterday. Oh? How? I filled the garage up with all the junk she made me collect. And how was that going to fix her? Well, there was no room left for the cars. Eric's car, Sir John's car, the Land Rover all had to stand outside in the rain. Did you think they were going to melt or something? No, but I thought Sir Bobo and Son might have got fed up and sorted their ladyship out. Uh-huh, and they didn't? No, they did not. I can't even think why. Huh. Well, maybe they are just as scared of her as you are. I don't care how things used to be done here. That's the way I want them done now. I mean, look at this place. It's like something out of Dickens. I know where everything is. Are you objecting to change? Well, when it's only for the sake of change, yes. It isn't. Maybe I'm just too old a dog to learn new tricks, but I've been with the Herald a long time. Maybe too long. 
Does that mean you're firing me too? No, it means I want things done my way. Neatly, tidily and fast. And if you don't like it, well, you know what you can do. Is that clear? Clear enough for me. Where are you going? Pub's not open yet, so I'll just go straight home. You're quitting then? You could put it that way. What about notice? You'll notice I'm going. I hope I didn't inconvenience you too much. Oh, not at all. It's been lovely having you here. Hasn't it, Brian? Oh, great. But I expect you'll be glad to get back to the manse. Yeah. Indeed. Although it won't be the manse anymore. Lady William assures me that I can live there rent-free till I'm called to a higher plane. <laughs> She's quite a character, isn't she? Indeed. She made only one condition about my return to the manse. Oh, what was that? That she be allowed to visit me every Wednesday afternoon. We have a common interest. Cribbage. <laughs> <laughs> and what experience have you had of working in the sawmill? Oh, you want? That's a lot. Where have you worked before? All over. Could you be a wee bit more specific? I felled trees for the Forestry Commission all over the West Highlands. And I was at the big sawmill in Drumshinnan for a bit. What about you? Uh, he's not had much experience, but he's a quick learner and a hard worker. Especially when he's working to me. And you've never worked around here before? You've worked up at Glendarrick, haven't you, Tom? Have you now? Tell me about it. There's nothing to tell. I worked there for a bit when Brian Blair was managing it. Uh-huh. And what happened? How do you mean? I mean, did you quit or were you kicked out? Blair and I didn't go on. And he fired you? Well, it sounds like a good qualification in my book. But if you don't get on with me, I'll fire you a damn sight quicker. Now, when can you start? Now, Isabel, I hope you haven't been feeding the minister all sorts of rubbish while he was staying with you. No, I think it was all quite wholesome. Now, I'm sure you'll be looking forward to having him back again, Mrs. Martin. <laughs> of course. You don't sound too sure. Well, it's just that I found this deed quite exciting. <laughs> well, you certainly developed a mean arm with a pail. Listen, the Orktown Herald referred to me as the heroine of the siege. Aye, we noticed that. Mind you, some of the credit must go to Lady William. Oh, well, I'm sure she would be delighted to hear you say so. Do you think so, Isabel? Then I'll tell her myself this evening. This evening? Mm -hmm. Lady William has very kindly invited Mr. McPherson and myself to the big house for a small celebration. No doubt Sir John will want to congratulate me on my victory. No doubt at all. And you know, it'd be nice to meet the Laird and his family socially. You know, in all the years the Cunninghams were here, they never once asked me up to dinner there. I wonder why. I'll tell you why, Brian Blair. It's because they failed to recognise good breeding when they saw it. Oh, that must be why they never invited us, either. <laughs> the Ross Giffords aristocrats, they know class when they see it. Especially Lady William. Oh, eh? yes, she's a very fine person. Lady William certainly knows what's what. You know, it's a great relief to at last have a Lady Laird who gets her priorities right. Why the hell did you have to say I'd worked at Gondarrick Sawmill? He asked if you'd worked up here. He asked me. If he asked me anything else, he'd let me answer. And if he asked you, the same goes. OK. Didn't stop us getting a job, did it? No. But it might if Snedden really finds out what happened at Glendara. He's the type that could start asking questions. You going to Octan? Eventually. Well, I'm not in any hurry. Hi. Hi. It's Scott, isn't it? Scott Logan. Yes. Carol. <laughs> Carol Mackay. That's right. I haven't seen you since we left school. How have you been? 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've been around a bit, but we're back here now. You got a job? Letter phallic. Ah. So we've seen a lot more of you then. That's not likely. We're going to be busy here. Fiona? Yes. I've heard a lot about you from Joanna. Oh, you must be Lady William. I've heard a lot about you too. And all bad. Well, I wouldn't say that. No, you didn't need to. I did. In any case, I make up my own mind. Good for you. How is your hotel doing? Very well at the moment. Yes. So I see. Of course, your running of the estate must stand you in good stead here. I understand you did that well. And you have a baby, don't you? Yes, a little boy. His name's David. But you're not married? No, no, I'm not. Quite right. Men? <laughs> Nothing but trouble. I should know. I've reared two sons. You know, this is a very interesting old building. Can I have a look around? <laughs> yes, of course. I got a couple of fellas for the sawmill. They're from Mark Tarn. Name of Logan. Not Tam Logan. Ah, that's one of them. The other one's his brother. Is there anything I should know about him? Uh, no, no, nothing special. He said he worked at the Glendarrick sawmill. Mm, that's right. And Brandt Lear fired him. I suppose so. Well, I want you to keep an eye on him. Oh, how can I? I'll have my hands full with the peat cutting. Just do it, will you? Did you get that gen I asked you for? Is this all of Glendarrick's customers? And the prices they charge. You've done a good job for a change. Well, I've hired a peat cutting machine so you can start cutting as soon as it arrives. In the meantime, get out there and get that stuff loaded with a ready cut. Have you got customers for it yet? Aye. From Derek's customers. What makes you think they're going to buy from us? Because we are going to undercut them till they bleed. You all right, Joe? Yes, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Please, don't keep going on at me. Sorry? Sorry. Come on, Joanna. We've work to do. Work? We were going to choose a room for the nursery today. Remember? Were we? Yes. Most impressive. You've done well. You're a very capable young woman, Fiona. Thank you. I'm surprised. Why? Well, everything they say about you is true. <laughs> Most unusual. Would you like some tea? I'd rather have a drab. Oh, well, I'm sure we can oblige. Oh, Archie Mingus tells me you brought a lot of your own furniture when you came here. Yes, that's right. What did you do with it? Well, I used some of it in my own rooms and the rest is in the lumber room upstairs. Taking up valuable space. Uh, not too valuable. I'd like to have a look at it. Yes, of course. I'll have that whiskey first. <laughs> <laughs> and have you decided on the room? Yes, we think the one at the end of the corridor above the study would do. Above the study? Uh, you sure about that? Well, Joanna chose it herself. Uh, by the way, she's obviously worried about having a baby, so I wanted to think that everybody's doing all they can to help her. Anything she asks for, she's to get. Understood? Oh, of course, Sir John. I remember Miss Fiona felt the same way when she was having her baby. And she didn't have anybody to help her after her mother died. Of course, Miss Joanna will have her husband to support her. Even so, be sure to give her all the help you can. Certainly, Sir John. Right? Yes. Ah, a vision of the light. I was just saying the same. Now, at a guess, I would say you have a date. As a matter of fact, I have. Where are you going? Well, I've never really thanked him for Derek for getting me driving again, so I'm taking him to Arne Creek for dinner. Mm, well, I would be very careful, young lady, because looking like that, he could well propose to you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he's done that already. Has he? What did you say? I said no. Oh. But it was just a temporary no. I, I feel we should get to know each other a wee bit better first. So nice. Oh, hello, Morning. Okay. Oh, hello, Claire. Have you been out somewhere tonight? Yeah, to Arna Craig. I'm taking him with Eric for a meal. That's nice. I've got to pop in and see Mrs. Johnson first, though. I'll see you right. later. Bye bye then, Claire. An awful nice girl, that. <laughs> I, she was just saying she was wanting to thank Inverdarek for getting her driving again. You know. oh, seem to be getting on very well together. Aye, they do. I'm glad. So they've chosen that room. <laughs> seem to think it was ideal. Even after you told them? Ah, oh, well, I didn't tell them. Well, you should have. Oh, 
Oh, I can just see it. Excuse me, Sir John, you can't use that room. It's already occupied. Well, it is, isn't it? Look, all old houses are supposed to have ghosts. We're lucky there's just the one room here that's haunted. And you let them choose it for a nursery. Well, if there is a ghost in that room, it's never bothered anybody while I've been here. Maybe that's because nobody's bothered it. Till now. Well, you'll be looking forward to playing host tonight. Who? Oh, you haven't forgotten, surely. Refresh my memory. The heroine of the hour. Mrs. Mack and the minister. <laughs> Bill's invited them here tonight. Now you've got it. What a prospect. Oh, the minister's all right. But Mrs. Mack... A daunting lady. It's a pity it was arranged at such short notice. You've just remembered a previous engagement. How did you guess? I'm psychic. Shall I put it off for you? I'm afraid it's too late for that now. <laughs> if only you'd reminded me earlier. Well, Mrs. Mack will be disappointed that you won't be there. I'll have to learn to live with my guilt. <laughs> Besides, I'm sure she won't mind too much when you take my place. Uh, now, I would love to, but... But uh, what? I'll think of something. She'll think it very rude if neither of us is here. The answer's in your hands. I seem to remember you once suggested that I bought you a boat. <laughs> <laughs> now, Father, do you know, I think you're making me an offer I just can't accept. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's nice to see you again. It's nice to be here. Oh, you know, if you two keep this up, you're going to become my best customers. Uh, your table will be ready in a minute. Would you like a drink while you're waiting? I'll have a lemonade, thanks. I'm driving here. Yes, I'll have one of them, too. No, you won't. You'll have a whiskey. No, 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 no honestly. Always you... take medical advice and good advice. <laughs> Sit down. Thanks. After you. Thanks. What sort of day you had? You've asked me that already. Oh, I so have. But it's getting better all the time. You know, I like being here with you. Only here? Anywhere. <laughs> ah. You two are getting to be regulars. I would if I had more time and more money. <laughs> As you like. I don't think it'll fall off tonight. <laughs> well, you'll be all right if it does anyway, since you'll get your nurse with you. <laughs> People are beginning to talk. Well, they've been talking for a wee while. Do you mind? I don't. Do you? Not in the least. See, so you're reading improving literature? Well, it's improved a lot since you got rid of Sheila Ramsey. I was expecting you before this. I didn't expect to be so late myself. Problems? The paper's only full-time reporter, who also happens to be its oldest inhabitant, has walked out on me, so I'll have to cope with the entire editorial content myself. Well, can you not find a replacement for him? I'll have to. But you don't find replacements for a job like that growing in trees. I could use a drink. Some whiskey over there. I was thinking of taking you for a drink. That's very kind of you, but the nearest pub's in Octarn. I've had enough of Octarn for one day. Is there nowhere else? Well, there's a hotel not a hundred miles away, I suppose. You don't sound very enthusiastic. I'm not. It's run by the same stuck-up bitch that used to run Glendarek. There isn't much about Glenn Darrick you like, is there? <laughs> if there's anything too like, I haven't found it yet. And the people are the worst part of it. Why's that? Well, I don't like incomers for a start. You'll find that out soon enough. They gave me a hard time from the moment I arrived here. Doesn't seem to have broken your spirit. I've got a notion to go and see them in action. Come on, let's go to this hotel. I'm paying. Oh, well. In that case, let's get to it. You must be glad to be settled back in your house again. Delighted. We're both most grateful to you, Lady William. Aren't we, Mrs. Mack? Oh, indeed we are, Lady William. Now, I didn't ask you here to thank me. I asked you here to celebrate. To celebrate the victory of a very gutsy lady. Oh, you, Mrs. That? Mack. That's champagne. It's the only drink to celebrate with. How Dad, very kind. No, no, we never drink champagne. Well, on a minister's stipend, I'm not surprised. But you're drinking it tonight. Here's to a spunky lady. Our success. Now, come along, Mrs. Mack. There's plenty more. Bottoms up. Lady William was up at Ardner Craig today. Oh, she fairly gets about. 
Aye, she was up here as well. Oh? Uh, uh, wondering when my mother would be back. Because well, she's into everybody's business. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining, mind. She's got Archie clearing up my garden for me. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I don't think Archie would agree with you. <laughs> oh, and uh, I asked Fiona if I could have a day off tomorrow. Oh, what for? Well, we haven't got a bed in the house, so I'll have to go into Octarn and buy them. Uh, no, no, don't do that, no. I've got to have something to sleep on. Aye, but you, you see, I, I've got a friend who, who's got some spare beds, and uh, well, I said I'd pick them up in a day or two. Oh, you, you never told me about this. <sighs> Well, as far as Glendarek's concerned, it's been them against me from the start. You know they actually got together and cleared all the fish out of one of our locks? You're kidding. Didn't you go to the police? Aye. Ah, but it was a waste of time. As far as the police in Octana are concerned, the Glendarek gang can do no wrong. Quite a setup. And you've made a mistake coming here with me. It certainly won't make you the blue-eyed boy. You'll find that out soon enough. That's okay with me. <sighs> Let's drink to it. Fair enough. Excuse me. Could we have the same again, please? I'm sorry, it's after 11. I'm not allowed to serve drinks after 11. Well, what about them? They're drinking coffee. They're not. They're residents. Oh, come off it. I've heard of people drinking here half the night. Are we a special case, then? Come on. I've spent a lot of time drinking in country hotels. I'm sorry, I can't serve you. I think I'd better have a word with the manager. OK, I'll get her. Ah, you're wasting your time. I told you the place is run by Fiona Cunningham. She used to run Then Derek. She's the worst of the lot of them. I think there's going to be trouble. Doesn't surprise me with Sneddon being here. Do you think we should go? No, not yet. Maybe Miss Fiona will need a bit of help. I'm sorry, but I can't serve alcohol after 11. I could lose my license if I did. I told you you'd get no joy out of her. Surely you don't expect the police at this time. No, but that doesn't give her the right to break the law, does it? I've heard you're not usually so fussy about it. Yes, well, I can guess who you heard that from. Come on, let's get out of this dump. It's easy seen we're not wanted here. Is that right? As I said, I don't want to lose my license. I'm sure you'd be the first to publish it if I did. Oh? You know who I am, then? Yes, I advertise with your paper. But I'm sorry, I cannot serve drink after 11 o'clock. I told you what would happen if you were seen with me. It was right, wasn't it? You were right about the people here, too. Aye. Come on. I'm sorry about that. But you handled it very well. Thanks. Looks like Sneddon's found himself a friend at last, eh? Come along now, Mrs. Mech. We've got to finish this bottle, too, you know. Oh, thank you. I don't mind if I do, Liddy. Very well, Bill. You know, it tastes very like lemonade, doesn't it? The bubbles kind of tickle my nose. I've never taken this champagne before. Champagne, Charlie, <laughs> is my name. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. Champagne drinking is my game. <laughs> Little day on the pond. Here we are again. Never mind the weather. Hello, hello. Here we are again. Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. Ladies, your bladder doesn't have to change you. Thanks to Tenor, it won't. I'm Charlotte, one of millions who can keep being themselves. And for me, that means being fabulous. Tenor Lady Pants. Looks like underwear, feels like cotton, and provides you with triple protection. And now, get a free pouch with Tenor Lady Pants Duo Packs. Tenor. Let's you be you. Boom. There he is, the man that made the decision to take life to the high board, to bravely throw himself into that great chlorinated unknown with as much verve as, I don't know, let's say a wild orca. And in the eyes of his young son, this daddy of all daddies, fueled with 100% whole grain shredded wheat, is shredding life, shredding that hotel high board. On the go all day, my feet ache, but now my shoulder lactive insoles cushion every step. Amazing comfort. Lighter on my feet, up and down. From the foot experts at Shoal, gel active insoles ergonomically designed for optimal shock absorption, cushioning and support. Gel active. Gel active insoles from Shoal.
classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. Good morning, Mrs. Mark. Good morning, Mrs. Mark. Yeah, that's it. Oh, sorry. There we go. That's right. Okay, that's it. Lovely, isn't it? Oh, good gracious, Mrs. Mack. I didn't realise it was all that sunny this morning. It's not the sun, Isabel. I just got a wee bit of a, a headache, that's all. Oh, of course. Last night it was. You and the minister were up at the big house for the wee celebration with Lady William. Did, did that go well? Very, very nice. Thank oh, you. that's nice. <laughs> morning, Isabel. Mm -hmm. Oh, morning, Mr. Murdoch. Is your paper, is it? Yes, please. Oh, uh, morning, oh. Mrs. Mack. Uh, are you in disguise? If anyone should be in disguise, it's you, you, you. I'd have thought you'd be frightened to show your face since you were so nasty and the, all the treachery you caused. Treachery? You were going to get a court order to evict me from the manse. Oh, that wasn't me, Mrs. Mike. That was Mr. Parker. You know what he's like. With your position on the congregational board, you should have known that the estate owned the manse. How could I? It's a very old document that has lain in a deed box for generations in Mr. Carradine's office. I dare say it would have turned up when the man's was sold. A fat lot of good that would have been to Mr. McPherson and me, and I must say, would have been homeless by then. Very sorry, Mrs. Mike. When I think of all the cups of tea I've given you, all the hours I've listened to all your problems, and this is how you repay me. Everything's worked out nicely now, though, hasn't well, no it? No thanks to you. No, Mr. Mutter. I can assure you it will be a very long time before I can forgive and forget. Oh, no, here comes that creepy crawly Craig. I hope we're not working with him. Why? Like I said, he's a creep. That's why. Aye. Here you've been taken on to work at the sawmill. You don't sound so pleased about it. I've got better things to do in my time to keep an eye on you two. Who asked you to anyway? Snedden. Who's that he's with? No idea. I think they're up from Glasgow for the fishing. Huh? There hasn't been fishing in Letter Phallic since I've been here. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, have a good day, lads. The price you're asking, it's already a good day. <laughs> <laughs> good night. The sharing cast plenty now. <laughs> What was all that about? That's none of your business. What are you doing here anyway? I think that Pete's going to sell itself. I was just going. Well, go on then. And don't come back till you sold it all. I'll be waiting for you at the sawmill to check up. <laughs> go on, you two. It's good to see work has been taken on, isn't it? Uh -huh. Even if it is by Snedden. <laughs> and even if it is Tam and Scott Logan. Look, good. Didn't Tom Logan work with Brian at the Glendarroch sawmill? Aye, I believe he did, uh-huh. Funny to see him back there. Mm -hmm. Morning. Morning. <clears throat> Staying locally? Yes. I am. For long? Oh, probably. Well, it's just that I'm the local postman. You're not. I am. And I need to know the name of anyone that's new in the district and where they're staying, so I can deliver their letters. Don't they usually have addresses on them? <laughs> Looks to me as if you've met your match system, Fergus. All right, I'll put you out of your misery. The name's Mark Ritchie, and for the moment I'm staying at Letter Fallon. What, Snedden taking on paying guests? No, I'm a friend of Harry Shaw's. I've come to work in Octan, and Harry's offered me accommodation till I find a place of my own. Have you got a note of all that? Oh, and before you ask, my business address is the office of the Octan Herald. Oh, you're the new editor then? Hi, Nora. You seem to have heard of me. Oh, just in passing. So, uh, how are you getting on with Mr. Snedden, then? Oh, all right. I think he has a chip on his shoulder about some things, but basically he seems quite pleasant. Ah, 
Miss Joanna. Sir John said you might be here. Oh, does he want to see me? No. I have to tell you, your carriage awaits without. My carriage? No, you're meant to say without what, and then I say without. Archie, what are you talking about? I've got the car at the door to take you to Octar. Oh, I'm not going to Octar. Well, Sir John says you are. Something about choosing the decor for the nursery. Oh, I see. Strange, but I don't remember mentioning to him that I intended to do that today. Some very nice shops in Octan, you know. Besides, women always enjoy spending money now, don't they? <laughs> the full sexist remark, Archie, is that women always enjoy spending their husbands' money. Oh, very good, uh, very good. <laughs> OK. Be there in a minute. Aye, aye. Every paper I phoned said the same thing. They'd only consider giving me a job if I had a degree or had done a college course in journalism. Well, what about your work for the Open University? I haven't completed the course. And was there no other advice they could give you? Oh, yes. Without exception, they all suggested I try to get experience on a small local paper. <laughs> so, what are you going to do then? I don't know. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Mrs. Anderson. Hmm. Uh, I was wrong. I see that now. I should have let the Herald sell the story to the Nationals. Well, would this new editor of yours not be impressed if you just told him that? Shouldn't think so. He's a very arrogant man. Bill? Uh-huh. Has this advertisement for a housekeeper been up long? No, no, just for a day or two. Oh. You're surely not thinking of applying, are you? <sighs> well, I might. I could do with the money. But, you know, it's at Letter Fallock. You'd be working for Snedden. I've heard all those stories about Mr. Snedden. I don't think he's the monster that people make him out to be. No. Um, I'll come back for my messages later, Isabel. What's wrong? Those fishermen are so talking to Snedden. I'm sure I saw them before. So? I think they used to fish at Glendara when I worked there. Maybe the fishing's better at Letter Fallock. No. Craig says there hasn't been any fishing at Letter Fallock for years. Shaw sure doesn't even have a water bailiff. Maybe we should stay there to start up again. Aye. And maybe we should keep our ears and eyes open. Hey, you two. You're not paid to stand around, brother. You know you work. I came to apologise. I should have sold the siege story to the Nationals through the Octan Herald. Yes, you should. Your apology is accepted. I wondered... Wondered what? If I could go back to doing the local listings. You surprised me. Well, I think I made a good job of them. I'm sure you did, but I thought you had ambitions to be a serious journalist. I have. Well, doing listings of village activities isn't going to help you. I might have known. Known what? That you're the kind of man who bears grudges. If you want to get on, you're going to have to change your attitude, you know. You're also going to have to get a telephone. As a matter of fact, I am on the waiting list. I've been told I'll have a phone installed any day now. I'm glad to hear it. No reporter should be without one. How did you know I wasn't on the phone? I tried to ring you. What for? To see if you were interested in a bit of menial work. Are you offering me a job? For two months, on a trial basis. Interested? Of course I am. Right. You can start by doing the captions on these photographs. And when you've finished that, we can update the tourist information. And deal with the reports from the local organisations. That's all right. Use Bert's desk. He won't mind. Hi. That's it. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I can see why you're wanting a housekeeper. Oh, well, this is it on a good day. So, you see, I think you're a bit too old to cope. Oh, well, that's awfully nice of you, Mr. Snedden, but uh, you don't need to worry. I'm very fit for my age. And, uh, what was your last job? I, I looked after it in Verdara when Mrs. McTaggart broke her hip. 
Of a dark, eh? Yes. That must have been a real treat. Oh, it was. What a nice man. A real gentleman. Is that a fact, Oh, man? kindness itself. <laughs> well, do I get the job? Oh, well, I suppose so. Nobody else has applied. Oh, thank you, Mr. Snedden. When would you like me to start? Oh, right now is as good a time as any. I was hoping that you would say that. Oh, I'd be very unhappy to leave you in a mess like this. <laughs> well, first of all, a wee cup of tea. Oh, I haven't uh, got time for that. Oh, there's nothing like a wee cup of tea to help you to relax, so just you sit yourself down. No, I've, I've worked to do. I'll tell you oh, what, I'll drop in later. your work will wait. Come on, now sit down there and relax. Look, moment, I just told you I don't want a cup of tea. And don't get excited, no. I've, you know, I've heard all about what an awful man you are, but I think your back's worse than your bite, eh? <laughs> Oh, dear, what babies men are when it comes to looking after themselves, I'm telling you. But never mind, don't worry now. You're in safe hands now. I'm going to look after you as if you were my own son. <laughs> Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. Design! One sheet! Make big mess! New Blendin is now 15% more strong as bull and as wettable, ringable, and scrubbable as ever! Plenty! Now 15% stronger! One sheet does plenty! Right. Listen up. I want you to stop moaning about your high energy bills. You see, you switch make comparing and switching energy providers so simple. One, go to you switch. Two, enter a few details. Three, you could save yourself a few hundred quid on your energy bills. It is that simple. Marvelous. You switch. The simple way to switch. Well, what are you waiting for? Go on. I really needed to make up the hours. I didn't ask for the flu last week. I need help. Quick, quick, think. Restore some order. Find out more at quickquid.co.uk. Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. So, how did you get on Nocturne? You knew about the expedition too? Mm hmm Father said he was going to lay on the car for you. Oh. So everybody knew except me. Mm. Well, there were things you needed to buy. Mm, I suppose so. So, you got everything you wanted? Well, most of the essentials, but uh, the choice of fabrics was pretty limited. Well, Father's going to Glasgow tomorrow. Why don't you go with him? I mean, you're bound to get things you need there. Oh, no, no. I don't want but, to bother Joe, really. I know what a perfectionist you are when it comes to things like this. Besides, it'll be good for you. All those shops. <laughs> Why is it that men always think women find shopping therapeutic? Well, isn't it? Well, sometimes. So you will go? It's all right, I suppose. Great. Corned beef. What? Which one do you fancy? Oh, that one. Right. Oh, did uh, Inverdarek say how he'd enjoyed his dinner with Claire? Oh, fine, as far as I could gather. Uh, barely getting serious, that, isn't it? Aye, it is that. I mean, imagine him proposing to her. What? Well, he hasn't known her all that long, has he? Proposing? Who, who told you that, Isabel? Claire told me. Goodness, I thought you would know. Did she? Did she what? Say no. Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, she did. She said it was too early to be thinking about marriage. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. You're not like Claire, then? Oh, of course I do. She's a grand lass. But so is Morag. Aye. What happened there, do you think? You know, I was sure at one time that Morag and Inverdara would get married. They're very fond of each other, Isabel. But with Claire, it's different. He's fierce smitten with her. Mm. Oh, poor Morag. You know, she was in here when Claire was on her way to dinner with Inverdara, and I thought she didn't look too happy about it. 
I'm afraid she's been more fond of him than she has ever let on. Do you think my dad wants me to go back and stay with Nancy Alice and Uncle Bob? Well, I don't think so. I think he's just thinking what's best for you in the long run. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Why do grown-ups always think they know what's best for you? <laughs> well, because they usually do. Not all the time. Uh, well, nobody's right all the time. Why do they not ask me what I want? Do you need to wait to be asked? You mean I should just tell them? Well, if you don't, how will they ever know, eh? It wasn't exactly made for comfort, was it? <laughs> oh, I'm still very short of furniture, I'm afraid. Uh. Got one or two bits and pieces waiting to come. And Dougal's got the promise of a couple of bears, but you know Dougal. Uh, you'll probably turn up with a couple of hammocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just wish I could get the place looking respectable before Bob gets here. Well, your garden looks more than respectable. I've cut the grass, I've weeded the flower beds, it looks a picture. <laughs> Well, I think that deserves a cup of tea. Hmm? I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> I can't tell you how grateful I am, Archie. Oh, don't mention it. Actually, I've enjoyed working up here. It's kept me well out of the way of old... Archie? Kaiser Bill. Oh. Huh. Do you know what this is? <clears throat> it looks like a... Wheat? Hmm. Do you know where I found it? In the garden. So, out you go and do the job properly. I was just going to make a cup of tea. Excellent idea. Just what I need. It's just what I need as well. No tea for you until there's not a weed in sight. And when you finish that, I've got another little job for you. Before my tea? We'll see. <laughs> you know, he's a good worker, but you have to keep prodding him. Unfortunately, it seems no one has done that until now. I'm, s I'm sorry, there's not a comfortable seat in the place. I own. <laughs> Finished? Yes. I'll check it through later. Take these up for me, would you? Me? You do type, don't you? Of course I do. Is it Bert's day off? One of many. He's packed the job in. For good. So, you propose to Nurse Miller? Where did you hear that? Isabel Blair told me. How did she find out? From the girl herself. I suppose it'll be around the whole village by now. I expect the whole village knows about it. Well, if you go around proposing to folk, you can expect them to tell their friends. Well, I don't mind that. I just don't see that it's anyone else's business. I can think of someone whose business it is. I'm sorry, Mrs McTaggart. I should have told you before you found out from someone else. I didn't mean me. It's Morag I'm thinking about. Oh, I, Morag. Don't you think you ought to tell her? Well, there's nothing to tell. Claire turned me down. Oh, so that makes it all right, does it? You're going to stop seeing her? No, no, I'm not. Of course you're not. Look, Morag knows that Claire and I see each other. Ah, but not that you're thinking of marrying the girl. And if you're half the man that I think you are, you're not going to take no for an answer. Well, are you? Come on. Mr. Snedden. Jim Hunter. Remember me? Hi. Hello there. Thanks for coming. My pleasure, I'm sure. You can start tomorrow then, can you? There's one problem, though. I haven't got anywhere to stay. <laughs> you won't be staying at Blair's again, then? <laughs> no. I didn't get on too well with Mr. Blair. Aye. So I heard. Well, hang on. I'll go and see what I can fix up for you. Oh, Mrs. Anderson. Yes, Mr. Snip. I have a young fellow outside. He'll be cutting timber for me for a oh, while. Oh, yes. 
Do you know anybody around here could give him a room and board? Yes, me. Me <laughs> and you, sure you'll be working here. What difference does that make? I've got a lovely spare room and I'd be happy to have him stay in it. For a consideration, of course. Oh, well, I'll let you work that out with him. Oh, yes. Oh, I'll go and get him. It's wonderful, isn't it? What is? Now we've got three young men to look after. This must be my lucky day. Alice. Hello, Dougal. You watch out for the wet paint. Ah, he's fine. Hi, Donald. Hello. Hello, Hello. Alice. <laughs> oh, Donald, watch the wet paint. <laughs> You're looking great. Well, I'm feeling great. And did you have a nice time in life? Oh, it was wonderful, Alice. All my meals made for me, nothing to do but sit all day with my feet up or, or go for a stroll along the front. <gasps> don't know how I'm ever going to be able to repay Lady William. Oh, I'm sure she doesn't expect you to. She even sent Archie in a car to collect Mother from the station. Mm -hmm. But I feel such a fraud. I mean, there was nothing wrong with me. Of course not, but you enjoyed yourself and that's the main thing. My, but you've been busy. Yeah, well, should look all right once it's got some furniture in it. Oh, Dougal, when are those beds coming? Eh, uh, to tomorrow. Now, is that definite? I know you and your tomorrows. Oh, definitely definite. Aye. Good. Mind you, never be the same as it was before. Oh, now, Bob will be back soon and he'll help you. That's right. Then we'll all be together again. Isn't that right, Donald? Yeah. When are we going home, Dad? So, for a couple of months at least, to get a full-time job with the Octave Herald. I don't sound very pleased about it. Well, I don't like Mark Ritchie. I don't think he likes me. Then why did he give you a job? Well, I could say it's because he sees my potential as a journalist, but... It's really because Bert walked out on him and he can't cope with his own. <laughs> you know he's staying up at Letter Files, don't you? That figures. Being snin or a match set. Now, Harry Shaw's making a lot of changes up there. Is he? What kind of changes? Listen to the ace reporter. Oh, don't. That's a sore subject at the moment. They're taking on new men. Are they? To do what? Tam and Scott Logan are back. Hmm. They said they've been started at the sawmill at Letter Fowler. Sawmill? <laughs> it hasn't been used for years. You know, Scott Logan's very nice. I didn't think so when we were at school, but he's matured very nicely, if you know <laughs> what I mean. Yep, I think so. Oh, there's only one problem, though. Well, two, really. A, he's really shy, and B, he's right under the thumb of his horrible brother. Mm. Mrs. McTaggart was in Blair's store today. That's exciting. She was talking to Isabel. Oh. I don't mind you telling her that I proposed to you. Are you sure? Quite sure. Do you think she'll tell anyone else? Well, I doubt it, but uh, it's the sort of news that spreads fast. Do you know why I told Isabel? I could have told you. It doesn't matter. It's because I was so happy. If I hadn't told someone, I might have burst. And I've always felt close to Isabel. I'm still very happy, you know. Are you? you? better believe it. If that's how you feel, why didn't you say you'd marry me? It's a big step, Tom. I need more time. I'm not sure I can trust my feelings just now. Do you think they're going to change? No. It's after half past ten. Spare room again. Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. Don't talk to me about home insurance. I mean, wouldn't it be fantastic if there was some website? Fantastic, yeah. Where you could simply check out a whole bunch of companies and get exactly the right deal. Fantastic, yeah. In a matter of minutes. Go <laughs> compare. Fantastic cover you'll discover when you're there. Mm. You know you ought to for your brick. 
Bits and Mortar! Nothing quite compares to go compare! Ah, fantastic! Yeah. Fantastic! <laughs> Coleman's. Easy does it. Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. Good morning. Morning. It's after seven. Aye. I better go. When I see you again. I'll try and pop in sometime this afternoon. It's a long time away. I know. <laughs> Mrs. McTaggart will be here in a minute. Aye. You better rumple the spare room bed. I'll do that. Your name is Joanna. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Mr. Andrew. Hey, told me you might be down here. Hello, Effie. <coughs> Miss Fiona. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. You haven't been to see me? No, I've been pretty busy. Have you? I've been worried about you, Joe. Oh, I don't know why. Yes, you do. That night you stayed at Ardner Craig, you were very upset. I would like to think that if you ever need someone to talk to, you could come to me. What would I want to talk about? Rory. Come on. I know you saw him when he was here. What did you tell him about the baby? I told him it wasn't his. I suppose that was for the best. It isn't a case of being for the best, Fiona. It's the truth. The baby isn't his. But you don't know. Yes, I do know it. I know the baby can't be his, and there is no more to say on the subject. No, of course there isn't. Well, are you ready? Oh, good morning, Fiona. Hello, Sir John. I'm sorry about the early visit. Glad to see you any time. I think we should go now. Right, I'm ready. We're going to Glasgow for some things that Joanna needs for the nursery. Oh, I see. Thanks for coming, Fiona. I'll see you soon. Yeah, make sure you do. Bye. Bye. Oh, help yourself to some coffee. You'll be seeing Morag today, will you? Morag? About what we were talking about yesterday. She has a right to know how things stand between you and Claire Miller. I suppose she has. You know she has. I saw Claire's car leaving as I came up the road. Aye. And if I saw it, you might be sure others did. I'm not disapproving in the dark. And I like the girl fine. But I also like Morag. And I think she should know how things are from you, not from village gossip. Morning, Mrs. Wiley. Only bags today. I won't need any thanks, Mr. Blair. But you usually take some. The lorry from Letter Fallock was here yesterday. The peat's cheaper than yours. Sorry. Morning, Mrs. Morning. Scott. Hiya. Hello, Carol. How's the job going at Letter Fallock? It's all right. Good. Do you sell Phil Rose, Mrs. Blair? No, I'm afraid not, but I can sell you all the makings. Rolls, butter, anything you want for a filling. I don't know. You don't want to go to all that trouble. Why don't you come up to the hotel at lunchtime and I'll make you up some sandwiches. Free gratis. And for nothing. Do you make some for Tam too? I suppose so. That'd be great, thanks a lot. When will I come for them? Back at one. Right. Hey, could you come to the kitchen door? I'll look out for you. 
Hey. See you. Bye, Thanks, sir. Jesus. Sorry, it's Phil. Did I do you out of a sale? Well, I'm not bothered about that, but Fiona's not going to be too pleased if she finds out what you're doing. She won't. What's this, then? You're not going to try to sell some of your pizza to us, are you? We've got plenty of our own things. I know you have. And you are selling it to my customers. What are you talking about? You know perfectly well what I'm talking about. I have been to five of our customers today, and they've all bought a peat from Craig. There's no such thing as our customers or your customers. This is the age of the free market, Blair. It only makes it a whole lot easier when one supplier deliberately undercuts the other's price. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, Blair. If you can't survive in it, maybe you should pack it in. Too sweet. Sorry about that. Just half a teaspoonful. I'll try to remember, yeah. You better get your coat on. I've got a job for you. Oh, good. What is it? Take a trip round the schools and get the prize winners list. Oh, gosh. What an exciting assignment. It has to be done. It's not a great step up from sending in community council reports from Glendarroch, is it? Yes, it is. You're working here in the office, not from home. I will eventually get stories to do, won't I? I'll tell you when you're ready for that. You don't have a car, do you? No. Well, when you've been round the Octarn schools, you'll just have to phone round the outlying primaries, won't you? From here, of course, because you don't have a phone either, do you? Not yet, but they say it'll be installed any... Any day now, yes, you told me. Let a fella have a lorry out delivering peat. They started yesterday. They've been round to all our customers, offering them peat at 5% less. I've come back from my lorry almost full. Well, how did they know who our customers were? Craig. Craig? Oh, Peter Craig. That's right. During the time I was sacked, he was selling your peat. So he'll have a complete list of our customers, then. And he knows when we deliver and where. Well, we'll have to change those days and get to the people before he does. And we'll have to pitch our prices well below theirs. Can we afford to? We can't afford not to. No. It's war, isn't it? Did you got time getting them, though? You made his way back. We're a lot of fucking for lunch. Ah, well, you didn't have to stand a bit talking to her all day. You filled us up as well. I was just saying thanks. Was that your dinner break? Or did you decide to take a holiday early this year? We get held up. So did the work. It won't happen again. Yeah, that right, it won't, Sunshine. If you two take a dinner break like that again, you'll be out of here so fast it'll make your head spin. Now, come on. Yes, sir. Right. I want that lot cleared before you go home tonight. Cut for firewood, ready for loading. Understand? It's a lot to do in one afternoon. You tell me that now. Well, you can just give me the extra half hour you owe me. That should make all the difference. Come on. Ah, Hunter. Mr. Sneddon. I checked your work this morning. You did a good job. Keep it up, son. Thanks, Mr. Stanley. Well, he seems in a nice mood. Is he? He was giving me some lip of it being late back. We were quite late. That's no reason to talk to us if we were ducked. You can get away with that with the likes of Craig. But not with me. Oh, relax. He's the kind that likes to throw his weight about, show who's boss. I've worked with plenty like that in my time. What you need is an insurance policy. How do you mean? Get something on them. Something you can use against them. That usually keeps them in order. Maybe you're right. Maybe we should just keep quiet and get on with our work. And let him trample all over us. That'll be right. You know, maybe there is something we could get in Sneddon. Oh, I. Look, I'm sure that's the truth as far as you're concerned, Tom. But can you be sure it's the truth as far as Morag's concerned? Yes. Absolutely? Yes. And you don't feel bad about the way you've treated her? <laughs> no. Look, we've been friends for a long time. Well, we've helped each other, been comfortable in each other's company. We've talked about marriage and we've both said no. Do you think she really and truly meant that? Yes. Tom, 
Look, if Morag and I had got married, it would have been for convenience, not love. Are you sure? Now that I've met you, I'm sure. Morag deserves to know about us. As an old friend, if nothing else. Hello. Had a good day? Not bad. <laughs> well, that looks better than not bad. Yeah, I know you don't, eh? Didn't you used to fish on Glendarrick estate? We did. I'd have thought Glendarrick was a better bet. There hasn't been organised fishing on Letter Fallock for years. <laughs> Who needs organisation? <coughs> What's your interest? Oh, don't worry. Uh, I work for Letter Fallock myself. I know what goes on. I don't want to get Mr Snedden into any trouble. He's just letting us use his beat at a wee discount. Who Mr Snedden does favours for is no business of mine. See you again. Aye. Snedden's work for the day. What do you think? <laughs> we could have if we stayed on a bit longer. How often do I have to tell you? Do what a man like Snedden wants at the start, and he'll ask more and more of you. I've just had a word with those fishermen. I think you are right. I'm pretty sure Snedden's given them a permit on the sly. On the sly? Without telling Shaw. That money he was stuffing in his pockets, it'll stay there. Right? Uh-uh. Here comes our minder. Oh, Craig, he's a clown. Uh, I think he's Snedden's right-hand man, but Snedden treats him like dirt. Well, why should he be the only one? Aye. How'd you go up to the day, then? What's it to you? I only asked. Craig's an important man, Jim. Snedden likes him to keep an eye on everything that's going on. Isn't that right, Mr Craig? Snedden's spy, is he? That's right. So you better be careful. Or he'll report back everything you say to Snedden. Cap in hand. <laughs> well, he can't do that if he hasn't got a cap. Hey! hey! Come on! Get out of the way! Come on, Craig! Come on, come on! Come on, come on! Come on, come on! Come on, come Come on, you! Uh, easy, easy now, we can to watch the play. Oh, Brian! Come on now, easily, easily now, there we are. Cross here. That's it. Great. Oh. Rest. Hmm? Oh. Ah. Uh -huh. This will no last long, you know. She doesn't like folk resting. Uh, she doesn't rest much herself, does she? <laughs> How did she get you roped in? You may well ask. Ever since I gave her that lift to the big house, she seems to regard me as her property. She regards me as a slave. She just walked into the shop and so I've kidnapped me. Come on, she said, there's work to be done, and here I am. <laughs> oh, it's all in a good cause, eh, helping Alice? I uh, don't grudge doing it, but uh, it would be nice to be oh, asked to not talk. Oh, it's no time for gossiping. Oh, no, 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 that doesn't go there. Goes into the bedroom. Pick it up, Artie. Ah, Carry it through. The bedroom. Oh, uh, well, uh, ah. Archie, mm -hmm. watch the paintwork. It'll be a lovely surprise for Alice, finding the cottage all furnished. <laughs> Brian's up there just now, helping Archie move all the stuff oh, in. Oh, good, good. I'd love to see Alice's face when she goes back from Arda Creek. <laughs> Wouldn't you, Donald? <laughs> yes. So we'll all be together again in the cottage, just like before. Oh, that'll be nice. <laughs> Won't it, Donald? <laughs> now, is uh, that the lot, then, Mrs. Larkin? Ah, uh, no, I, I, I couldn't find any baking powder on the shelf, Isabel. Oh, sorry, I've got some in the back shop. I'll Good. get it for you. Tea and flour and Gran? sugar and biscuits and... Yes, Gran? That's all. What is it, Donald? I don't want to go to the cottage. I want to stay with Dad. Oh. Mm, nice smell. That has been baking. Tired? Oh, just a little. <laughs> Hello, darling. I thought I heard the car. Wow. Hi. Hello. Mm. 
Did you have a good day? A busy one. You get everything you wanted? Uh, well, I think so. <laughs> All systems go for the nursery, then? Yes, I'll make a start tomorrow. Well, you're not thinking of doing it yourself, are you? Um, well, I'll get Archie to help me, if Bill can spare him. I do not think we should get professionals in to do it. No, it's all right. I'll manage. Show is that wise? Eric, I'm pregnant. I'm not an invalid. Well, you just promise me you'll be careful, eh? I promise. <laughs> I'll see you both at dinner. Oh, Dad, can I have a word with you? We've got a problem about the price we're charging for our peat. I thought that was settled on, dear. Well, yes, it was, but there's been a new development. Rather alarming one, actually. Ah. Brian Blair came round to see me today. Going back. Oh, cool. At least it's a job. Yes, but I'm not getting the experience I need as a journalist. I'm just typing captions and making his coffee. He's really quite attractive, isn't he? Mark Ritchie. His manner certainly isn't. You're not interested then? Nope, not even the slightest. You could do with a man in your life, you know. Oh, listen to who's talking. I'm doing very nicely, thank you very much. Scott Logan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made him sandwiches for his lunch and he came up to Arden Craig for them. Oh, and he came to collect them. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it. And his brother came too. Well, that would cramp your style. Well, not very much. Meeting him tomorrow night at the song. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, guess who's back in Glendara? Who? Jim Hunter. <laughs> How do you know? Got yeah. Now, here we are. Oh. And uh, what's that? Bread pudding. I told you, I don't want any pudding. Oh, I don't really want any either, Mrs. Anderson. Nonsense. Two hard-working young men like yourselves, you need to keep your strength up. I don't even yeah. like bread pudding. Oh, but you haven't tasted mine. Oh, come on now. Eat it up, and there's more if you want it. Now, some milk. There, now. It's a long time since I've been bullied like that. I was not bullying me into eating that starch. I haven't eaten this kind of pudding since school dinners. This is very good, you know. Try some. Only me. Dougal, what are you doing here? It is to be social call. Were you expecting someone else? No. Uh, well, I, I just thought that Claire might call in after she'd finished her rounds. Oh, so it is serious then. What do you mean? Well, everybody's talking about you two. Well, I wish they wouldn't. It's Morag, you see. Morag? What's it got to do with her? Well, Claire and Mrs. McTaggart have been getting on at me to tell her about it. I know how you feel. You do? Aye. I have to go up and tell Alice that Donald doesn't want to go back and live with her and Bob, and... Well, I just don't know how I'm going to do it. So that's what it was all about. What? Uh, well, Donald came to see me the other day. He was complaining how grown-ups are always doing what they think is best for him without consulting him. I said he should tell them what he wants. Oh, he's done that all right. And he wants to stay with me. It'll break Alice's heart. I know it will. What does your mother think? Oh, she thinks the boy ought to be allowed to do what he wants. I'm on my way to tell Alice now, and... Well, I, I, I just looked in here to put it off for a bit. Well, I'll get away home. Jim will be waiting for his tea. You know, it's lovely having all my young men to look after. I think I'll have to look out my old recipe book 
and see if I can't make you something special for tomorrow, eh? Cheerio! Cheerio, Mrs. Anderson. <sighs> she goes on like this, I'm going to start putting on weight. Oh, she's a wee bit too much of a good thing. I'll have a word with her tomorrow. Don't be too hard on her. It's quite nice to have a cheery face about the place. It makes a change after the office. What's the matter? Are you not getting on any better with the Ramsey girl? I'm not getting on with her at all. Is it just me or is she difficult with everyone? Oh, she certainly seems to have her problems with men, all right. I suppose being stuck away in a backwater, she wouldn't have had much experience. <laughs> experience? To my knowledge, she's had a broken marriage, an illegitimate child, and an affair with a married man. She's hardly a little Miss Innocent. I don't believe it. No, it's true. Mind you, she carries on as if she's frigid, which is a pity, since it's the only tasty bit of stuff around here. <laughs> I take it you've been married? Aye, and divorced. What about you? Yes, I was married. What happened? I came to Octan to forget. Okay? Fair enough. Alice? You and the two beds you were going to try and get for me. You knew about all this, didn't you? Oh, why? I, I uh, but, 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 but I didn't organise it. Lady William did that. Oh, Duca. What's wrong? Nothing. Well, why are you crying then? I just forgotten how how kind folk can be. I don't deserve all this. Aye, you do, you do. Alice. It's right. I... Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, Duca. Were you going to say something? I just looked in to, to see how you like the furniture. Oh, I love it. It's the best thing that's happened to me in, in ages. Well, that, that's fine, Mary. I know I, I've got a lot of thank yous to say. And I'm going to start with you. Alice. I... <laughs> Thanks, Duke. <gasps> Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company. a second look you'll find lots of places to use Dettol because there are more ways than ever to kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses discover new places to use Dettol classic dramas on STV sponsored by the electric heating company Sorry, Mr. Smith. It's all right, I'm finished. You can take it away. Oh, come on, eat it up. You need the energy for all the work you're going to do. I just said I don't want it. It's a sin to let good food like that go to waste. I told you, woman, I don't want it. I don't want to see any of you here when I get back, right? Oh, jeez. Yep. It's a sin to let good food like that go to waste. Oh, you're a terrible man, so you are. <laughs> So he started up the fishing again and let her follow. How then? Well, those were fishermen I saw talking to the other day, weren't they? I don't know who they were and I don't want to either. It must cost quite a bit to get a fishing permit round here. I suppose it does. 
Blakey, how much? Nothing to you. I'm just interested. So tell me. I hate the season, I might be around five or six hundred pounds a week. A month? A week? And, uh, how many beats in letter, Fowler? About five or six. Come on, Tom. It's time we were away. What's the hurry? I've not finished you. I'm going on without you. So, what did you find out? Plenty. I asked Craig what the fishing at Letter Farrach would be worth. And? I've worked it out that if Snedden is on the fiddle, letting people fish with it, telling Harry Shaw, then it could be worth as much as 40,000 over the season. You're joking. Not bad, is it? Not bad at all. Yeah, you got to hand it to the man. He's got style. I just wasn't expecting to see you, that's all. It's a while since I've dropped in. Aye, aye it is. You'll have been busy? Aye. You've seen a lot of Claire? Aye. I bumped into her in the shop. She was telling me she'd taken you to Ardna Craig. <laughs> well, it was, it was an idea she had for thanking me for me getting her back driving again. Look, Morag, I think there's something I ought to explain to you. You don't have to explain anything. No, I, I think I do. Look, I know you proposed to her. I was afraid you would. Everyone else does. And I know she turned you down. Aye, aye, she did. I'm sorry. Uh, well, well, you see, I hope... Well, I think she might change her mind. She stayed here the other night, Morag. I wanted you in early today. You should have phoned. You aren't on the phone. I am now. It was installed yesterday afternoon. And how am I meant to know that? ESP. I told you it was going to be installed any day now. Anyway, wouldn't an experienced journalist have tried directory inquiries on the off chance? Don't push it. Remember, you're working here on a trial basis. Oh, silly of me to forget. On the other hand, it wouldn't be a very good idea for you to get rid of me. In the circumstances. What circumstances? Well, since Bert was fired, or walked out, you haven't told me which, I think you'd find it rather awkward to get in the next issue out without someone to help you. Be careful you don't get too clever, Mrs. Ramsay. That shouldn't be too difficult. I'll just follow your example. There are some more photographs there to be captioned. Oh, good. I was hoping it would be something creative like that. You wouldn't like me to make you a coffee first, would you? Not too sweet, of course. Uh, what's this? Oh, well, it's uh, Sheila's new phone number. She left it on her way to work. They just installed it yesterday. Ah, oh, good. Should help with the job. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you off to? Delivering Pete. What, today? Yeah. I'm trying to steal a match or let a fallot for where they stole one on us. Ross Giffen's right. This is war. Now, listen, I... Get out, Craig! No, no, Brian, look, it's all right. Here. Oh, I'm surprised you dare show your face in here. I don't know what you mean. You know fine what he means. The peat deliveries. Undercutting our prices using Glenn Derrick's list of customers, it is not ethical. I was only doing what I was told to do. Uh, I was only obeying orders. Sounds familiar. Look, Brian, my wife and family come first. And I'll go and do whatever I have to to keep my job, right? Hello, Peter. Oh. That's all right, Mrs. Anderson. I think he's got a lot on his mind. I see. So, uh, 
How are you getting on up at Letter Fella, Oh, oh Isabel, I've got a new lease of life. All these nice young men to look after. It's like having a family all over again. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Snedden? Oh, I was right about him, you know. Oh, he's not nearly as bad as folk make out. No. <laughs> And here, not only have I got a new job, but I've got a new lodger as well. Oh, well, that'll keep you busy. <laughs> yes, a nice young man. He's come to cut down some trees for Mr. Snedden. Oh, but here you would know him. He stayed with you the last time he was in Glendara. Jim Hunter. Uh -huh. um, now, do you mind, Isabel, if I leave my order and come back for it later? Because I'm that busy. Oh, oh. That's uh, all right, Mrs. Anderson. Jim Hunter. <laughs> Hasn't he been to see us? Uh, who knows? Don't let it bother you. Hey, why go to Mrs. Anderson's? We could have stayed with us. Uh, Isabel, oh, forget on. it. Forget it. I've got to go. You all got on so well. I didn't know what to say. No wonder. I suppose it's quite brave of him to come straight out with it like that, isn't it? I should have guessed that he loved her. That night when the three of us went out together, there's something about the way they were with each other that shut me out. Morag, how do you feel about him, my darling? Do you love him? It's always the way, isn't it? You never appreciate what you've got till you lose it. You know, there was a time when, when we all thought that you and he would get married. I mind for dropping hints about it. Did you never talk about it? We did once, actually. Decided it would be better if we just stayed friends. And I'm sure you will. Oh, no. Everything's changed. I always used to go to him with any wee problems I had, you know. I might be talk it over. Or else I'd just go to him if I was feeling fed up or, or lonely. I can't do that now. You see, I thought he'd always be there. It's like physical pain. Feeling that things will never be the same again. I've lost something that was very important to me. Maura. <laughs> Hello, we've got a visitor. Isn't that nice? Hello, Mr. Blair. Remember me? I thought I told you never to come back to Glendara. Maybe you haven't noticed, but this isn't Glendara. It's Letter Fallon. Don't get smart, Hunter. What's this all about? Stay out of it, Tom. If you want to stay in one piece, get away from here. What? What? Well, I personally will take you apart. I'm a bit old to go around making threats like that. Try me. What the hell's going on here? This is between Hunter and me. Don't bank on it. It seems Mr. Blair doesn't like me working here. Is that a fact? Well, I'm the one that does the hard and far and round here. I'm also the one who decides who's welcome and better fella. And that doesn't include you, Blair. Move. Just stay away from Isabel. You understand? Are you not ready yet? I'm not happy about it, Archie. I'm not happy at all. Oh, where you go? That's just foolishness. It's not foolishness. It's a matter of history. Look, even if you're right, what's going to happen to us working up there in broad daylight? Right. Shall we make a start? I'm ready. In Miss Joanna. Uh, are you sure that this is the right room for your nursery? Yes, I'm quite sure. If there's a lot of sunny rooms in the West Wing. No, no, they're too far away, I feel. Oh, there's that room that Miss Fiona used for her wee David's nursery. Now, that's just the right size. 
And it's quite near your own room. No, I would rather not use that one. Anyway, the one I've chosen is perfect. It looks as if it was made to be a nursery. That's hardly surprising. What do you mean, Effie? Well, actually, it was a nursery once before. Do you know, I was sure it must have been. Well, why didn't Fiona use it then? She preferred the other room. Are we off then? Yes, we are. Mm. Effie, you're not coming? Hey, I'll be up as soon as I've done the dishes, Miss Joanna. Alice. Isabel. Oh, is it today Bob gets back? Yeah, he said he'd be home about tea time and I've got a completely empty larder to fill. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, have you two met? Claire, this is Alice Taylor. Alice, this is Claire Miller. Hello. Hello. I've heard a lot about you. How's Mrs. Lachlan? I haven't been up to see her since she came back from a holiday. Uh, she's fine. And Donald? Oh, he's fine too. Oh, Isabel, thanks for that lovely chest of drawers. Oh, don't mention it. I hope it comes in handy. Oh, it's bound to. And um, will you thank Brian for me? I believe he helped mo move most of the furniture. Well, it's really Lady William you should be thanking. She organised it all. She's an amazing woman for her age, isn't she? I hear she's already been to see almost everyone in the estate. Well, I'll make sure that I see her to thank her then. Uh, Isabel, have you got any plain flour? Yes, look, it's up on the shelf thing. Oh, I'll be on my way there now. Probably see you tomorrow as well. All oh, right, Claire, you take care now. Have you had a bad day, Alice? Not particularly. Why? You sound as if you have. Well, not as bad as poor Morag Stewart's day. And it's all that young lady's fault. Miss Joanna's compliments, and are you going to honour us with your presence? Tell her I'm preparing the vegetables for the dinner. Is there a reason you're doing them this early? Because it's when I want to do them. Aye, but because you're too frightened to come up work in that room. What if it is? If you'd any sense, you'd be frightened too. <laughs> well, well, the kitchen's still here, <gasps> and the occupants haven't changed much. <laughs> oh, hello. It's good to have you back. Thanks, Archie. When do you start? I've just been arranging that with young Ross Gifford. Tomorrow. Oh. So I thought I'd order my lunch. Oh. <laughs> You'll be very welcome. <laughs> have you been home yet? No, I'm just going once to look at the pheasant pens. Oh, no. Alice will be looking forward to seeing you. Yeah? And I'm looking forward to seeing her. That's wonderful, Bob. Aye. Ah, well, we'll see you both tomorrow, then. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Ah. <laughs> oh. I wish we could be there when he sees all that furniture. Eh? Aye. All of it transported with the sweat of my brow. Ah, and a wee bit help from Brian Blair. Where were we? Uh, you were up there helping Miss Joanna. And I was down here peeling the potatoes. So you're not coming to help me? Oh, I'm sorry, but I, I just don't like that room at all. It gives me the shivers. Have you ever actually seen a ghost in it? No, no, I haven't. Well, neither have I, and I've been here a lot longer than you have. Oh. Alice, come in. It's great that Bob's back. What's wrong? Maura came to see me this morning. She was very upset. Well, what was wrong with her? She was perfectly calm when she left here. And if you believe that, Evadara, you're not the man I thought you were. Well, what, what am I supposed to have done? She was in tears when she told me what you'd said to her. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to hurt her. Well, you did. It's not like you to be so insensitive. If this is that nurse's in Well, you leave Claire out of this. This has nothing to do with her. That's not what Morag said. Look, I'm sorry if what I said upset Morag. Maybe I was clumsy about the way I put Brutal it. Brutal is more like it. But you can't blame any of this on oh, Claire. Oh, can't I? No. I suppose she had no idea how things were between you and Morag. But how things were between me and Morag is that we were just good friends. Oh, come on, you know it was more than that. No, I don't. Everyone expected that the two of you would end up getting married. Look, I have never regarded Morag as anything more than a friend, and I've never given her any reason to think otherwise. Then can you explain to me why she was sobbing her heart out this morning? No, I can't. She left here perfectly calmly after we talked. Well, she wouldn't want to show her true feelings in front of you. She has too much pride. Well, Alice, I wish you'd had too much pride than to come over here poking your nose into things that don't concern you. Oh, but it does concern me. Morag is my friend. Morag is my friend, too. Are you sure it's all right me being here? Of course it is. Where are the others? They've gone home long ago. Does Tam know you're here with me? What do you think? I think he doesn't like me very much. Doesn't like anybody very much. So where did you tell them you were going? 
I said I was going to meet an old school friend. That's the truth, after all. <laughs> I suppose it is. The school seems a long time ago now. It does. You know, I don't remember anything about French or maths or anything else. Neither do I. I remember the school dances, though. Where all the girls used to line up one side of the hall waiting to see who was going to ask them to dance. <laughs> the military two <laughs> the, the dashing white sergeant. <laughs> you never asked me to dance any of them. That's because I couldn't do them. I asked you a couple of times at the disco, though. But you never spoke to me afterwards. <laughs> do you not fancy me? I'm not your type. I've always fancied you. You're quite shy, aren't you? I suppose I am. Well, maybe I'll have to make the first move. And the second. <laughs> I thought you said you were shy. <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> Welcome home, Bob. And it is home. Where did you get all this? We've been given it. Everyone in the village contributed something because they knew we didn't have any money to get new furniture. Archie and Brian delivered it yesterday when I was out. I thought we'd be living out of suitcases and sitting in orange boxes for months. People have been so kind. <sighs> you certainly have. It's a new start, Bob. And they all want it to work for us. And it's going to. That's wrong. I have no idea how lonely it was, Alice. Oh, yes, I have. But the Lachlans will be here soon. And they'll be bringing Donald with them. Then we'll all be together again. Hmm. <laughs> Ah. Oh, that's nice. It's beginning to get really quite cold up there. <clears throat> Thanks for your help, Archie. Still a lot to do. Mm, yes, there is. Will you tell Lady Bill, uh, Lady William, that you'll be needing me tomorrow and for the foreseeable future? <laughs> well, I'll tell her, but that is no guarantee that she won't have something more important in mind for you. I will do your best, eh? And she's a harder taskmistress than I am. Oh. A lot harder. At least you let me go at my own speed. Mm -hmm. And a surprisingly good speed it was, too. Effie didn't come and help, though. No, she didn't, I know. Well, she seemed to be a wee bit on edge. Do you know why? No idea. I'm sure it was something to do with that room. You know, she seemed to be trying to talk me out of using it for the nursery. Did she? Mm. You said it had been a nursery before. Uh, yes. Whose was it? Well, old Sir Logan Petty had a sister. It was her room. So she would have been Fiona's great aunt. Uh, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> mm. Suppose she must be long gone. Gone? Oh, aye, aye. Oh, long. that well. Just going to make a pot of tea. I'm not coming in. Listen, uh, I understand you've been spreading it about that there's something going on between you and me that Claire came along and spoiled. It's not true. I want you to set the record straight. I want you to tell those people that but you I told that told story. I haven't told anybody anything. You no, know, I want you to tell those people that there was never any possibility of marriage between you and me. There was a rumour about that and you know it. I wonder who did that about, eh? Now look. Whatever you may feel for me, I am not in love with you and I never have been. And I won't have Claire made out to be the woman that split up a happy relationship and broke poor Morag Stewart's heart. And Verdanach, that's not fair. And you're damn right it's not. The 
There was never anything between you and me except friendship. I'm not sure there's even that anymore. Well, Mrs. Taylor, you're still the best cook I ever married. Oh, away you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was pretty ordinary. Didn't have time to prepare anything special. But just you wait till I hit top form again. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Mm. There's a lot of them. Hello. Hello, well, hello Donald. How was school today? It's all right. Look who's here. Hello, young man. Welcome, Bob. He hadn't brought his cases in. Bob will get them. Uh, no, we, we didn't bring them. Is he not staying tonight? I, I, I've made up his bed for him. Tell them, Dougal. Tell us what. Donald isn't coming back to live here. What? It's not my decision. It's, it's what he wants. I don't believe you. I'm afraid it's true, Alice. Donald? I'm sorry, Auntie Alice, but I want to stay with my dad. Classic dramas on STV. Sponsored by the Electric Heating Company.